Well, good to have you guys here tonight. Give somebody a high five around you, in the, you know, in the realm, like, phew. just like, you know, in the wind. Phew. All right, just go, phew. okay. Amen. You guys take your seats. Good to have you guys here tonight. Good to have you guys that live streamed with us tonight. Uh, this is our midweek uh, a message that we uh, come to enjoy. It gives us sort of like a little pickup, you know, and uh, so we invite you to uh, be a part of that pickup tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your attention and for your time. We know it's most valuable. Everybody's time is valuable in these days, and so we thank you that you're using it wisely tonight to bring in the Word of God to fix some area or to open up a gate in some area in your life. And so we welcome you guys here with us tonight from all over the world. Amen. And you guys know where you are, and so we bless you and continually to always bless you and thank you. And uh, guess what? Hook yourself up to our online uh, ministry so that you can get some special treatment out there uh, from uh, this particular ministry here that's anointed to uh, remove burdens and to destroy yokes. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we got any happy people in the house tonight? Oh, yeah. Well, I hear three. I hear three. Can I get four? Can I get four? I hear four, four, four. Can I get five? I got five. All right. I got five. All right. So we got five happy po folk in the house tonight. Uh, welcome here this week. Uh, how many of you guys are getting tired of, sick and tired of being sick and tired of hearing sick and tired and looking at sick and tired of people being sick and tired and talking about being <laughs> sick and tired? And how many of you guys are just sick and tired of hearing all this stuff about being sick and tired? You know, I tell you right now, it was, it was two years ago, it was the COVID, the COVID, the COVID, the COVID. And then, you know, and all through those two years, it was the COVID. And now, all you see, and I've been watching uh, some of the commercials and some of the things on some of the, new, the medias and whatever. Now all you hear is diabetes, 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 diabetes. You know, they go from one thing to another thing, you know, to try to keep everybody's attention on something else other than Jesus Christ. One day, guess what? All the newscasters are going to chip in and everybody's going to start talking about Jesus. How about that? <laughs> How about that? Everybody's going to get all happy about the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you. We live in a world, I tell you, that's going the way God said it was going to go. And I'm glad that all of you guys are enduring to the end. Amen. 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 Well, we are here tonight to, uh, I don't know how many of you guys are wearing heavy shoes, but we're here tonight to pick you up a little bit. All right? You got heavy shoes on, a heavy coat. Maybe you're wearing heavy clothes. I don't know. All right? <laughs> But we're here to loosen you up tonight, all right? So shake yourself right where you are. Those of you at home, please join us tonight. Just shake yourself, okay? Uh, there's no distance in the spirit realm. God is there with you. He's here with us. And so we're being moved by the spirit of God this night to talk about you guys and picking yourselves up, all right? And getting away from all of the, the sour stuff that's been trying to be, uh, or should I say, has been poured on us uh, for the last couple of years and to get into a newness of thinking, we, all, we should always have resourceful thinking. That's who we are. Uh, as children of the Most High God, you and I have been born again of God, for God, to do the things of God. So there's always creativity inside of us, and there's always the ability to invent something that's always possible within us. And so, you know, in this time when a lot of people are still sad and, you know, and people are passing, and people have always passed, you know, but more attention is given to certain ways that people pass than, than other ways. And we want to make sure tonight that in the midst of all of these things that are going on and that you hear that's going on, and some of them are not even going on, uh, that you keep yourself lifted up, all right? Keep yourself in a place where you are, you are loose from all that stuff that's flying around every day, trying to attach itself to you, all right, and to pull you down, all right? And so tonight, we're going to be talking about that, about you personally, that's right. It doesn't matter how bad that situation is or how you're feeling about it, okay? You can stand because of who you are. You can stand and you can shake stuff off of you, and you can live in a way that others would look at you and go, like, how did they get through that? How do they manage that kind of smile and all of this stuff that's going on? How can they be happy like that when they, I know that this is going on? And it's all because of the way we carry ourselves up here. We renew our minds. And as you renew your mind, your thoughts change. When your thoughts change, your emotions change, all right? 
And so we are those who, again, we are forgiven. We're not perfect. We're forgiven just like you guys. But the deal is, I don't know how much you renew your mind. I know what we teach here and I know what we share wherever we are. And so the ability to renew your mind causes you to go through every season that comes on the world. Whether it's in a special culture uh, because, you know, God does judge nations or whether it's in the, uh, the economy of the world, whatever's going on, you and I have the ability to maintain a place of steadiness because of what we know, who we know, and who's revealing things to us as we go on this journey. Amen? Amen. So we're going to dibble and dabble into the Word of God tonight, and when we come out, we're going to be like Popeye the Sailor Man. We're going to go... <laughs> well, my... But the teacher's pet is over there talking. So, <laughs> all right. So, so when we come out tonight again, we're not going to be like, uh, what's the other guy's name was? Pluto? Pl Pluto? Well, he always lost, right? He always lost. No matter how big and strong he looked, no matter what he was trying to connive, he always lost. And that's the way it is in the kingdom of darkness. They always lose if you know who you are, all right? You may get dragged around like Popeye used to do, and you may get thrown around a little bit, you know? But guess what? When you open up your can of <laughs> when you open up your can of <laughs> when you open up your can of <laughs> all right, when you open up your can, guess what? Things change. All right? Things always change. So come on go with me tonight to uh, Proverbs chapter 17, please. Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17. Man, it's good to be alive, to see all these things, these wonderful things that God said would happen in these days. And like Jesus told his disciples, he says, there are many prophets and kings who just desire to hear and see what you hear and see, and they never got to see it. Well, you and I are now living in the beyond the Jesus era when he came and produced all of these things in the earth. He perpetuated God's name, uh, salvation, resurrection for you and I. He brought forth everything that would cause you and I to have a great life. And so in these days, even when some people are still speaking under dark clouds, you don't have to catch the rain. Are you guys with me? Amen. You don't have to be there catching the rain that they're trying to drop. You can create your own sunshine every day, and you can rejoice and say, praise the Lord, no matter what's going on. All right? Proverbs. Everybody should be there by now. All right? Thank you for coming on. I see you just running in and clicking on. Good. Good to have you here. He says this in Proverbs chapter 17. Ah, oh, let's go. Verse um, 22. All right? Verse 22. A merry heart, a merry heart does good like a medicine. Not a sad heart. <laughs> a merry heart, okay, does good like a medicine. In other words, you're, the way God created you uh, with uh the synthetic, uh, what do you always call it? Uh, well, it's morphine, but we used to call it endorphine. That's what it's called. God had already put that in us to fix our bodies, all right? And so when you live with a smile, you can go another mile. When you, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you perpetuate joy every day in your life, it helps you to create in your body the ability to have more strength in yourself that even when something does become a, a, a situational thing, say something becomes, comes over on your body and it's on posted ground, well, your body has the ability to fix it and to run it off if you would follow the Word of God. A merry heart, okay? All right, now in order to have a merry heart, you've got to focus on what the Word of God says. Because there ain't nothing out there that's going to make you merry, I can tell you that. So you have to focus on another realm if you're going to have a merry heart that does good like a medicine, okay? Now, doing good like a medicine simply means that you don't have to pay copay. Are you guys with me? So it, it, that's what the Word says. It does good like a medicine. So it can fix your body. It can fix your situations. It can fix circumstances around you. It can cause you to live through a day that other people would fall in. Having a merry heart. All right. My wife and I, we found this out many years ago, and we used to set up, and we still set up, you know, at nights now. And, and most nights, I look at something funny before, before we go to bed. All right? Hogan's Heroes, 
you know, sometimes Carol Burnett, because some of those things are, you know, but the old shows, Andy Griffith, all those old shows, there are a lot of things in those shows that can make you laugh. Uh, Three Studios, I haven't caught up with them lately, you know, but anything that can cause you to, to get in a mode where you make your heart merry, you are automatically helping yourself. And the reason the enemy comes against you so hard is because he knows that this is how you are made to work. See, Jesus said, nothing is impossible to you who believe, nothing, okay? He said that. So if our Lord said that nothing is impossible, then guess what? It's possible that you can, through a merry heart, change every circumstance in your life when it comes to your physical body, even when it comes to your finances or whatever. Why? Because a merry heart is going to cause your emotions okay, to be in another realm. And if your emotions are in another realm and they're not tied to this realm, then you can see possibilities. See, you can feel possibilities. Remember last week I said when you guys feel good, you know, when you see something good, it makes you feel good. Well, guess what? It's, it's that way with a merry heart. When people are happy, don't they seem so, so wonderful? You ever seen a man that's drinking all the time? Don't drunk people always seem happy? Come on now, talk to me. <laughs> Why? It's because their heart is merry. It's, it's, it's because their heart is merry, you know, and, and no matter what's going on, they could fall down and get back up and they still go, oh man, you know, and they're still happy. They ain't got, you know, and, and all I'm saying is that God has already given all of us a way to, to maintain a great life, to put a smile on our face and let all of those hundreds of muscles in your face move and work and, and, and give somebody a mask okay, because that's what a face is, it's a mask. Give somebody a mask that, guess what, they wouldn't mind wearing themselves, all right? And it's not a Halloween mask, okay? You have a kingdom mask, okay, a smile that somebody will see on, you know, on your job in the grocery store, wherever you might be, and they'll look at you and they'll go like, man, I wish I could smile like that because you don't know what people are going through. You know, and you see the outside, but you don't never see the inside. And this is why it's so important for you and I to every day, guess what, to get up and say, you know something, I'm going to have me a sunshiny day today. Day going to be a day of sunshine. This is the day that the Lord has made. And guess what I'm going to do? What am I going to do? Am I going to get all sad, sappy, and broken out? Or am I going to be joyful in it? See, that's up to you. It's not up to the Lord. He makes the day, and guess what? You have to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maintain the duty of this day. God has bought the event. I'm going to make sure that I carry out the duty for this day. I'm going to be a happy camper. Somebody stand up right now and shake yourself. Come on, shake yourself. Shake yourself. Come on, shake yourself. Shake yourself because guess what? You have to loosen up to, to enjoy and to have a rejoicing heart all the time. All right, you guys, go and give God a praise. Where y'all going? 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 I got y'all, did it? Y'all sit down real quick, did it? Yeah, all right, you guys take your seats, all right? Always learn to rejoice, regardless of what's going on, all right? Now, when we rejoice, this is the thing about rejoicing. You might want to write this down, all right? When you laugh aloud and you rejoice at your circumstances, when you laugh out loud and you rejoice at your circumstances, do you know what you're doing? You're bringing God's attention to your circumstances. That's right. When you laugh and you and you just oh you just talking oh man look oh man look how well God's blessing me and whatever and and God says man the enemy's throwing everything at them that he can and they still they still crying out and laughing about it and whatever you get God's attention you bring God on the scene see and that's what we want to do we want to keep God always around us always looking at look how my kids are breaking through this stuff look how they're tearing the enemy's kingdom down and look at them laughing about it having a good time about it and he's over there frustrated going like what can I do to get them sad what can I do to get them to start complaining being worried all the time oh I don't know what today's gonna be well you don't own today so you can't promise yourself in anything that you don't own okay now if you own today you can promise today how today is gonna be Okay, but you don't own today. You don't own tomorrow. So guess what? You can't promise tomorrow. You can't say, well, tomorrow it's going to be like this. No, by faith, you're believing that tomorrow is going to be a great day for you, but you don't own tomorrow. All right? And so when you wake up tomorrow morning, it might be raining. Are you going to stop it? Because you like sunshine? <laughs> Are you going to get up and say, rain, go away? You know? No, you're not. Well, you're going to live through the rain, right? 
but you're going to enjoy it. Why? Because you know that God made the rain. God made this day. God ordered the rain. God ordered the raindrops. He knows every raindrop because he knows how many drops are in every cloud. So he knows when a cloud releases, and he knows exactly how many raindrops have fallen on the earth. So when you and I get up, we're, the first thing we do is we look at the circumstance. We say, Lord, thank you for the rain. You know, because over in California, they need some. We're getting plenty over here in Virginia. You know, one day you're going to bless them, Lord. I guess they need to pray a little more, Lord. And you're going to have a good time. You're not going to get all sad and bent up because it's raining. You're going to enjoy the rain. You're going to go out and say, man, that rain's going to be good for my garden. It's going to be good for my yard. It's going to be good for my farm. You're not looking at the rain and going like, well, you know, I want the sunshine today, Lord. Why are you disappointing me? You're not going to do that. At least you shouldn't do that. Don't let him catch you doing that, okay? But you attract the Lord, you know? When, you, when you're talking about things and you're celebrating things, Jesus said, when two or three are gathered together in my name, he says, I'll be there or I'll show up in the midst of them. And the, and the, and the original says it like this. It says, God will show up in the, in the midst of them and he'll give you what you can handle or what you're able to handle. Okay, And so when you're there, you're laughing and you're, you're talking about how good God is and all of God's faithfulness, and you go like, oh, man, throw another one, and, and whatever. And God shows up and says, man, let me give that child some more favor since they're using it wisely. All right? That's what you do. You use your faith where it's necessary, not where it's unnecessary. You've heard my wife say about that old piece of regularly car that she used to drive. <laughs> <laughs> that old piece of car that she's got. She could use her faith there because it was absolutely necessary, you know? Yeah, if she wanted to get to work, you know? And as poor as we were, she was going to work, all right? <laughs> but, but the whole deal was, the whole deal was, again, you use every circumstance, every situation. I'm just, this is life to me, all right? And you enjoy it. There's no sense in getting up and going like, I'll tell you, you know, and fussing about the car, it's best just get up and use your faith and, and attract the Lord there. And you're going like, you know something, you're going to get to Richmond and you're going to bring me back home. And God's going like, man, listen to this person talking about this. And, I, and, and the Lord is going like, I know that car don't even work. And she, she's denying it. <laughs> she's denying it the right to work. And that draws him, that attracts him. When, you, when pain's going on in your body and you're standing up and you're telling the Lord, Lord, by your stripes I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus. I got a, a, a physician that knows what's going on. I don't have no copay. He already paid the copay, you know, and he's waiting for everybody. You attract God to that situation to come in because guess what? Even in the midst of it, you're not allowing the circumstances to burden you down. What you're doing is you're challenging the circumstances so that they will go. That's what you're doing with your faith. <laughs> Woo! Somebody say, he's El Shaddai. He's El Shaddai. Mm. Have you ever heard that name, El Shaddai? 48 times through the Bible, 30-some uh, times in the book of Job alone. Why do you think it's in the book of Job alone? 30-some times, 31 times in the book of Job alone. Six times in the, in the book that I really like, uh, Genesis, but I like them all. But 30-some but times in the book of Job. Why do you think it's there? Because of all that Job was, you see that? See how he showed up? God showed up, and they kept talking about El Shaddai, and El Shaddai, and El Shaddai, and El Shaddai, and El Shaddai was calling on the name of the Lord. Now, check this out. These are the names, or these are the, I would say, the, the objects of God's attention that caused him to have that name, that people recognize him in those situations. And you're going to recognize him in situations that you're in. That's why, again, you should rejoice, you should shout, you should holler all the time. You should, don't let nobody shut you up, you know, and all that stuff, you know. All right, number one is this. He's called the God of the holy mountain. The holy mountain. That's what you and I establish every, every time we come together and get into praise and worship. Okay, we establish a holy place for the Lord God. His name is also, in, as El Shaddai, God of the wilderness. You ever been in the wilderness and God made a river in the wilderness for you? <laughs> He's called the God of the wilderness. Remember when Jesus sat in the wilderness and his disciples say, how can you prepare a table in the wilderness? And he said, listen, give me the fish and the loaves. <laughs> How can you prepare a table in the wilderness? He's the God of the wilderness. That's what his name represents, El Shaddai. He's the God of the wilderness. So if you're ever in a wilderness, if you're ever in a wilderness, 
and we're talking about rejoicing and shouting. If you're ever in a, I don't know about you guys, I've been in the wilderness, okay? And it looked like all the trees were cut down. There was nothing green there, okay? <laughs> I don't know about you guys, all right? But there weren't any trees in the wilderness I was in. It was hot. It was like a desert, but it was a wilderness, okay? But he's the God of the wilderness. So, so when, he, when we know that he's the God of the wilderness, we can shout in the wilderness because it's going gonna, it's gonna to draw his attention. Are you guys with me tonight? All right, I'm trying to help somebody. If I don't help anybody here, I'm going to help somebody out there, all right, because somebody's going to be helped tonight, all right? He's also called the God, the, the God, the destroyer of our enemies. You got any enemies? <laughs> I know Jesus said, pray for your enemies. In other words, Jesus was saying, pray for your enemies that God don't get his hands on them. That's it. <laughs> See, he's the God of your enemies. He's the one who the word says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. So guess what? Whenever you got enemies, all you need to do is know that God is the God of your enemies. All right? And this is why you don't like to have enemies because you know they're going to be under the hand of God if they don't change. See, see, he's the God of the enemies. He's the destroyer of your enemies. See? And so when I know who he is, then guess what? You can rejoice in any situation. You can shout about whatever's going on because you're going to attract God to your circumstance all the time. And he never leaves us and he never forsakes us. I'm telling you right now. He may not show up when you want him to show up at breakfast time, but he's going to be there by lunchtime, all right? He, he, may, he may not be there by breakfast when you get up and go like, oh, Lord, I need you. Oh, where are you? But I'm telling you, he's working on your circumstance. He promised that he's making all things work together for our... No, no, can't be, sad as you guys are. He got to be for your sadness. He's making all things work together for your what? Shout it out. What? What does good mean to you? See? See, good means to you, it might be different for somebody else what good is. To somebody else, good might be one biscuit. To you, it might be, you know, I need five loaves because I got a lot of kids to feed this week. You know, what's good to you might not be exactly good to others. But the thing is, he's good to everyone according to how you can receive. Again, if two or three shall gather together in my name, there I will be in the midst of them to give them according to their ability to receive. All right? So your ability to receive is going to stand in a lot of places in life so that you can do what you need to do for you and your family, all right? Here's another part of El Shaddai, all right? He's called the all-sufficient one. So if you ever, you ever, ever been uh, uh, just a little bit short, you know, you got a longer month than your money is? <laughs> Come on now. Your, your paycheck is just a little bit short. And you got maybe three more days left in the week. And that's why people come up and say, thank God it's Friday, because they got through them other three days. You know? <laughs> they got them. But you ever been short? Uh, anybody ever been short? Y'all sitting there? If, you, if you've never been short, just hold on a little bit in life. All right? Because you got people hauling in short now because the gas went up. I've seen pictures of people got signs up, you know, that beer is cheaper than gas now and, and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, got tank, get a little locks on the, on the gas tanks and all kinds of crazy stuff. Why? It's because somebody's coming up short. All right? And for the world, it's going to get shorter. But not with you. Not, not, not who you are. Not with El Shaddai on your side. The all-sufficient one. See, so when things are coming up short, you, you know who he is. His, his name is El Shaddai. So as El Shaddai, uh, you know, I, I call on him, and that's the Old Testament name that we use, but you, you, you know who he is because of what he did. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he hasn't changed because we gave him or God gave him a name for us to use now, the name of Yeshua or Jesus. He hasn't changed. His character hasn't changed. What you need to know is that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if I ever come up short, then I have somebody that's, guess what? He has a long end for me. Okay? He can make my end better. Why? Because Ephesians 3.20 says he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. So he can do more than you could ever dream up, and he can do more than you could ever sit down and write out the rest of your life because he is the one who is the all-sufficient one. All right? He's the one who's got the rest of your shortage to make it a long thing. All right? 
So take your shortage and give it to the Lord so that he can add his longevity to it. And guess what? You'll come up. I mean, how can you feed 5,000 men with a few dried fish, you know, and a few little loaves? You know, how can you feed men like that? I mean, just, just feed families. That's, that wasn't counting the women and the children that were there. But it says there were at least 5,000 men at one sitting. And to take a few loaves and a few fish and go like boom. And everybody, my mentor told me many years ago, he says, he says, can't you see Jesus? And he says, just picture Jesus taking that fish and he'd break the head off and he'd give the head to one disciple and the tail to another. And by the time he got in our hand, the head had grown the tail and the tail had grown the head. <laughs> and he says, and every time they broke a fish, the fish multiplied to the point that guess what? Everybody was filled and it took up seven baskets full. You know, 12 baskets one time, then seven. So how do you do that? Unless you, uh, get, uh, you know who you are. I'm the God of the wilderness. So in the wilderness, doesn't matter what's going on. I'm the God of the wilderness, and I'm the owner of the wilderness. I'm boss in the wilderness. And guess what? If you go to the boss, guess what? If you know you're working for the boss, then everything else is going to be all right. Are you guys with me? You know, you're working for the boss. Hunt somebody say, that's who we're working for. Say, the devil ain't nobody but an employee. God's been using him. He's been working for the Lord ever since he's ever created. I'm just telling you, he's been working. And, and, and you need to know how to take those circumstances and, and give God glory and just say, Lord, thank you. Man, I'm just telling you, you are El Shaddai. You all oh, mercy. There's no situation that I can get in that you can't fix. See, when you talk to him like that, then he knows that, guess what? You trust him. See, and you build that. It doesn't happen when you first became a Christian, you know? When you first became a Christian, you didn't know who you were, you didn't know who the devil was, and you didn't know who God was, okay? And you have to learn all three so that you will know who I am, who the Lord is, who the enemy is. And then you begin, that's where your prayer life begins, right there, is understanding who you are, who God is, okay? Who you are, and then why are you in prayer? Or do you just pray because you're happy? I know we say the song, I sing because I'm happy. Well, do you pray because you're happy? Most of the time, you don't pray because you're happy. Most of the time, you pray because something's going on. That dog been biting at you, leaving fleas in your house, and you need to clean house. <laughs> I'm just telling you guys, you guys, y'all got to get this thing together. So when you pray, you're dealing with three individuals and the character of three individuals. See, your character, God's character, and the enemy's character. So, so you need to know God's character straight up and down when you go to him. Daddy God, you're the God of the wilderness. You're the God who destroyed my enemies. I know they're listening because they know you're about to kick some. Mm. So guess what, Lord? I'm here with you. Let it happen. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. That's how you got to have that kind of attitude. If you have this old attitude, oh, Lord, please come by here because we just need you, Lord. He's going like, I came by there a long time ago. In fact, I was there before the foundations of the world because Jesus and I and the Holy Spirit sat down in the judgment council and decided that Jesus would come. So Jesus spoke up before man was ever created and said, I will. And so because he said, I will, then the Holy Spirit said, if you do, then I will also. And guess what? So both of them have already worked through everything before the foundations of the world. You and I are just a part of what was already worked out. And now we are sitting here resting in Jesus' finished work that started back there before we were ever even created. You guys got to get that. Christian people got to get away from this being down all the time, afraid all the time. What are you afraid of? You're not going to hell, so you have no reason to fear anything. <laughs> yeah, you, you will never even walk, touch, get even close to that place. Aren't you glad? You, <laughs> you never even, you won't even walk in there and your clothes get cinched or whatever, you know, a smell of smoke on you. You have a whole lot to be happy for because of Jesus' finished work. Somebody say glory. glory. All right, somebody out there getting happy. That's right. Get your family saved tonight. All right. All right, and here's one more. Mm, well, here's two more. All right? Especially for those of you that are young people and got babies and whatever. El Shaddai is also called God the nurturer of babies. In other words, when you need shoes for your baby, 
<laughs> when you need milk for your baby, oh, it's getting quiet in here on me now. When you need anything for your babies, he's called the God who's the nurturer of babies. He's the one who causes things to happen, the resources to come so that your babies can grow. All right? See, he's a family person, always in relationships. All right? Then he's called the almighty God, the sovereign God, the one who is more than enough. All right? And he's always more than enough. And so when we put our hands in his hands and let him hold our hands, when, we, when he release our hands, we got to have more, enough, more than enough in our hands when we put our hands in his hands, okay? Come on, go with me to Ephesians chapter 5 real quick. We're going to get through this thing tonight. I want you to be so happy tonight that you can't sleep. <laughs> I want you to be so happy, so confident in how God is making your life, rearranging it, shaping it, that it, that it, it causes you to stay uh, 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 this, is, this, is, this is this place in, in the spirit room where you are asleep, but you're not asleep, but, you, but you're awake, but you're not awake. Where, where you and God are, are in a conversation about, about your future, you know? Now you say, where, where's that place, Pastor? I've been there, but I can't tell you how to get there. I can only tell you who can carry you there. All right. And that's the one, that's the one, that's the only one that you would necessarily have to be or put forth as a priority in that particular place, is the one who can take you there, all right? In Ephesians chapter 5, you guys there? Yes. All right, y'all got the smartphone, so y'all really rolling, all right? In verse 20, it says this. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, all right? In other words, life's journey, you can write this one down. This will be a great thing for you to understand tonight. Life's a journey. We need to focus on all the little things that make it joyful. The little things, all right? The home that you have. When you first got it, it was a big thing, but now you've been there for a while, it's a little thing. <laughs> you need to thank him for that little thing now. You know, that car when you first got it, Oh, man, you, you clean that thing almost every day. You didn't let dust settle on it, you know? And now, guess what? After you've had it a few years, guess what? To you, it's a little thing. But you still need to thank God for that little thing because it's a part of the journey. If I would leave here tonight or tomorrow morning or whatever, and I drove to D.C., there are a lot of little things I'm going to see on the way. That's the journey. The journey is filled with little things, all right? Not the destination. But the journey is filled with little things. And so every day, you ought to thank God for all the little things that you have. Like the bread that you eat every day, to you, guess what? When you didn't have it, oh boy, you was waiting for somebody to bring you something, okay? Now you have more than enough. To you, it's a little thing, okay? The, the, the clothes that you wear. Can you remember when you couldn't dress so fine? Come on now. You didn't have them shiny alligator shoes years ago. You had a pair of padlocks or whatever, you know, that, had, that was made out of phony leather, okay, and whatever. And guess what? This is what you were. But God has moved you through, and now when you got your first set of alligators, or maybe they were crocodiles or whatever they were. But guess what? Now, guess what? Those things have become small to you because they're everyday things in your life. And you need to sometimes stop and thank God, Lord, look at what you've done in my life. Look at all of these things that have accumulated where my mind has come from, that you bought me from that little teeny place of A, and now I'm over here in M-N-O-Z-Y-A, and I'm doing it backward, Lord. I got it all going on now that none of the alphabets are in order because my life is so big, Lord, that I can just reach in any way. I can pick up an A over there. I can pick up a B over here. I can pick up a D way over there. I can pick up a G way over there. Why? Because all of these are little things that now he's accumulated in your life, and you need to sometimes sit down and think about those things. The health that you have now. Yeah, when you were young and you were vibrant, guess what you did? You treated your body like it was a trash can. You put everything in it. You ate everywhere you were. <laughs> you ate everywhere you wanted to eat, you put everything in there, and you didn't think about anything going on in your body. Now God has kept you through all those years of you abusing your stomach, tearing up your blood system. He's had his mercy on you. And now when you get old enough and you start realizing 
man, I need to do something now because now, 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 well, guess what? You go back and you thank God that he kept you all those days, that you didn't get destroyed in all those days. You go back and you thank him and you say, Lord, I thank you now that I got, a, I got enough sense now to do something to help you while I'm praying because I used to pray, pray over my food and eat anything and I didn't care what it was and I didn't realize it. Guess what? You were looking at it like, why are you praying over something that ain't gonna do you no good? eating them hug chillings, pouring all that stuff on pig feet down in the country, eating all that fat, and then think your body is just going to go like, oh, man, we pumping. <laughs> yeah, you pumping, all right. <laughs> you pumping something wrong the wrong way. And now we get a little older, and guess what? We got all those enemies inside. We're fighting the fifth column now, all right? The enemies inside of us. And you spend more time now fighting the fifth column then you do what? You don't, you don't run around like you used to do with all that energy. You know, as, as people used to say, you could stay up till 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning and get up at 5 o'clock and go to work. You can't do that no more, can you? <laughs> you can't do that no more. And for all of you young people, if you think that's going to last forever, I got some news for you tonight, okay? That ain't going to last forever, all right? That is not going to last forever, all right? That's not going to last forever, I can tell you, all right? But again, thank him always. Taste life now. See, enjoy life now. Because tomorrow does not belong to you. The breath that you're going to take at 11 o'clock tonight doesn't belong to you. All right? It belongs to the Lord. So you can't promise yourself that you would be here at 12 o'clock tonight. Because it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. So what do you do? You enjoy now, all right? Salvation is when? Now. now. That's what it says in Corinthians. Salvation is now, okay? So we enjoy life every day, every moment, and we enjoy the Lord with it. And it will keep you up above all the stuff that's going on out there because you'll be focusing on the priority of your life. Who gave you that job? Who gave you the strength to carry out that job? That's right. So you have to put him there and every day thank him for all the little things. Lord, I thank you that I got a paycheck. There are people out there that don't even want to work. They don't want a paycheck. You know, they don't even want to work. Lord, I thank you that you've given me the responsibility to take care of my family, our household, our this or that. There are people out there that have the mindset in this day, just as the Spirit of God said, they're going to be taught doctrines of demons. All right? They out there, they don't want to work because they feel that I don't need to work. That's a doctrine of a devil because the man that God first created, God put him to work. As soon as he made him, he put him to work. He didn't give him a vacation first. He said he, he made a garden and he put him in a garden first. And he says, let's go to work first. Then we can enjoy all that other stuff. If you ever worked in a garden, you know God, a garden's work. All right? all the weeds that come up and all the other stuff. But God, when God, and you go back to the first things that God the first mentions and you see a lot of how the Lord ordered things. And man is to, has, has been given the responsibility to work. You notice that the earth, when God made it, he didn't put bridges over the rivers so that man could always have a bridge there. He said, you figure it out. <laughs> because I'm giving you the responsibility to what? Have dominion. So you figure it out. I've made you wise. You figure out how to get over to the other side. God didn't come in and just put bridges over the rivers and bridges here and bridges there. God didn't come in and give man airplane. Jesus never talked about an airplane. He never talked about flying. You know, he talked about the stairway to heaven which every step is a revelation of him going up and coming back. He talked about that, but he never talked about the flying things or the trains and whatever. He, God gave man. And we got people that in this generation don't even want to work. I see people advertising, got signs everywhere. We are hiring, we are hiring. Five years ago, if you'd put a sign up, we are hiring, there would have been 300 people on it. Now they got jobs out there, people paying, I mean, what we used to call back in the country, good money. Y'all know what good money is? You know, good money, good money, and people don't want good money anymore because they don't want any money. Now, you know that's got to be a doctrine of a devil that's messing with a person's mind, teaching a person. Come on, go with me to Matthew chapter 6. 
Oh, you got to learn. I'm telling you, kids, I've learned something through these years that no matter what's going on, you have to maintain this joyful attitude with God. All right? The life that you and I are living now, it parallels the life of Ruth and Boaz. Okay? When, when Naomi told Ruth to go, wash yourself, put on your best clothing, and go in there and lay down by his feet, he's over there. He has finished his work. Boaz had finished his harvest work. It was during the time of Pentecost. Boaz had finished his work. He's our kinsman redeemer. He represents Jesus. He had finished his work. She was told to go lay down at his feet and to say this when he woke up, as, as I'm here, I'm your wife. Okay? When you, when you look at that story, it's so just a short, four little chapters. Okay? Naomi represents Israel. Ruth represents the church who follows Israel into meeting the Redeemer. Okay? When she laid down with him and he said, I'm going to take care of everything, what she was doing was representing the church laying down in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I don't have to go out there and be, and I have used this word before, scuffling and hustling and bustling and trying to do everything that the world do when all we need to do is take this word and take the promises that are already finished and say, let me rest in the promises of God. People are trying to do it on them, to do it for themselves, trying to make things happen for themselves. I'm telling you, it ain't going to work. You're going to be struggling, you're going to be struggling, you're going to be struggling, and you don't have to struggle with the Lord because he loves you so much, he already demonstrated his faithfulness to you. Jesus' blood is there speaking out for you. Whenever you cry out, his blood is there saying, oh, I did that for her. Oh, she don't have to worry about that because I already finished that. That's what the blood of Jesus is doing for you right now. Oh, oh, he don't have to, he don't have to beg for that. I already made that plain. You know, that's already done. And this is, this is all you need to do. It's called faith. <laughs> it's called faith. Matthew 6, 33. Has my wife taught this many years? I've taught it too, but I don't think I taught as much as you taught. Some things you just leave alone because somebody else is taking care of it. <laughs> so she took care of it, so I didn't, I didn't have to, I didn't have to, you know. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Is that saying first or second or third or fourth first. or fifth? First. Okay. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then he says this, and his righteousness. All right. That's his way or what he has revealed to you, that this is my way of doing things. His righteousness. In other words, when, God, when the Lord says, if you want to prosper, then you need to do this. And then you say, well, I'm going to do this. Well, then you're not seeking his righteousness, okay? When the Lord says that by my stripes you heal, okay, and you say, well, you know, well, doctor, you know, my, my mama died from this and my granddaddy died from this and everybody died from this, then you're not seeking his righteousness because his righteousness supersedes all those generations. All right, he says, I will bless to a thousand generations. You're going back to a curse. Now, even science knows that every two seconds, you walk into the future. Even science knows that every two seconds, you have just stepped into your future. What you heard me say a little while ago was way back there. What you hear me saying now, you stepped into your future to hear it, okay? So guess what? God is not a God of the past. He's a God of our future. Yeah. So faith is always about our future. So when we take the word of God and we say, by his stripes, I am healed, then I'm taking everything from my past and leaving it, and I'm stepping in into my future. Are you guys with me? So when I talk about resources or anything, anything that comes out of that word that God has already said is yours or already declared as a promise to you, then guess what? All you need to do is step in it. It already belongs to you. It already belongs to you. You don't have to go muster it up, work it up. You know, I had somebody the other week that read her that, that, that a book that I wrote on the Holy Spirit, and I wrote that book for this church because we've been using somebody else's book for ever since we've been in ministry. And I wrote that book for men and women that come into this ministry so we would have something to give them to help them to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because without getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have no power. You have the life of Jesus, which is salvation. But you have no life to be sanctified. 
See, you have no life to walk in sanctification. That means the reshaping, the changing, and the renewing of the mind. You have no, no power to get you there because the enemy's throwing everything at you already that he used at you in the world, and he's throwing those things at you, and you have no power. Yes, you have eternal life inside of you, but you have no power to live now to resist, to challenge, to throw out, to bind and loose. You have no power to do that without the power of the Holy Spirit. And I wrote that book for that purpose so that people would know, listen, it is absolutely necessary. If you're going to be a Christian, then be the right Christian, okay? Be a full Christian. Don't just walk around in part of the, of the rules and the regulations and the things that go with our relationship. Walk in the fullness of it so that you can acquire. And I had somebody told me, they read that book and said, said let me tell you something. Said they felt like they got baptized in the Holy Spirit all over again. And I'm telling you, you need that to understand the Word of God. You have to have that power. Other than that, there's no unlocking to the scriptures because you can't unlock them in your carnal mind, okay? Your carnal mind will never unlock these scriptures. But when you get that spiritual mind and you start growing that, oh, buddy, I'm going to tell you right now, that's where the keys of the kingdom lie, in your spiritual mind. You can open up things with that spiritual mind because now God has given you the keys of the kingdom, all right? And he says this, first, not second, not third, not fourth, the first priority of every day should be that you seek the kingdom of God. You can roll out of the bed late going to work. Don't go to work late without Jesus. You can roll, you can do everything you want to do in, in the morning. The first thing that you need to do, I seek first the kingdom of God. If, all, if you get up and you got to run, put your shoes on while you're in the car. You better be calling on the name of the Lord. I'm telling you right now. Okay. Now, don't, now, listen, now, now don't put the seatbelt through the steering wheel and try to drive, okay? But I will tell you this. I will tell you this, all right? Make sure that you, the first thing you do in the mornings, you talk to Daddy God, you talk to the Holy Spirit, you talk to the Lord Jesus. I seek first the kingdom of God every day. Thine is the what? Kingdom. The what? Power. And the what? Glory. Forever and ever. Every day you need to do that. Other than that, what you're going to do is you're going to let all the stuff that you hear and everybody on your job, they're going to come in with all those old sad, sappy stories. Well, I heard so-and-so was sick. Well, somebody died. Well, this went on or whatever. Well, that's going on. Well, the government said this. Let me tell you something. What does God say? That's first. See, what does God say? And then you take what God says, and you take everybody else out there, and you squeeze them under God. <laughs> and you make you some grape juice. All right? Out of all that trouble. You guys think I'm joking. This is, this is absolutely necessary every day. You have to constantly do this. Other than that, I'll tell you what you do. All right? And don't do it. But I'm telling you what you could do. Take a week off from God. See what happens. Just take a week, not, not the whole year. Just take a week. Don't address him. Don't talk to him. Don't call on his name. Don't think about the kingdom. You know, just, just go on about your natural little duties every day that you've been doing, and don't even involve God. Don't even, just every time you get to think about him, push him out. See what will happen to you. We'll have to come find you with a, with a dump truck because you'll have so much mess going on that we're going to have to bring you and everything and dump it on the, on the foot of the cross again. Why? It's because the world has been born into that, and they don't know anything about the Lord. But you who know him should know that it's absolutely necessary for me to have him as priority every day. You who know him. See, you know him as Jesus asked his disciples, but whom do you say that I am? Everybody else is saying, I'm a good man, but who do you say I am? See, who do you say? So I say who he is every day. I address the day. The sun shine and close the world like a garment of righteousness because God ordered it every day. All right? Not because anybody out there in the world said, oh, the sun we wanted to show, we wanted to be at this level today or that level. No, God so ordered it that those rays are coming to us thousands and thousands of years before, before they even get here, to, to, to make the seasons that you and I have today. Now, you're talking about wise? You're talking about wisdom? That's wisdom, that I can set something off way over there and make it shine way over there, and it changes the seasons? <laughs> that's wisdom, okay? That's, that's, that's total wisdom. So he says here, and all these things, don't you love that? 
when God makes a promise. And all these things, what things? All the stuff that he was talking about over here. All the things that people have to say that they need every day. The first thing you really need is God. I have to have this mind every day. Speak to the Lord every day. I have to do that every day. I have to say, Lord, you know something? I didn't, I, my life's so good. Please bless those people over there. If I just, want, I just want them to have an idea of how faithful you are every day. They don't know, Lord. You know, they don't know. The man that's lost, he doesn't know he's walking in darkness. He thinks that his life is straight because that's what he was taught by, again, authority figures in his life. Mom and daddy taught him to live a certain way. Uncles and all these people taught him to live a certain way. And so guess what? Those authority figures speak highly in his mind. So I'm doing what they did because they did it, and it don't seem like anything was wrong with what they did. But yet you don't know a person's heart. See? And only God can look at that heart. So you focus on, as a Christian, you focus on, this is the Lord. I, I'm not breathing unless he gave it to me. So because he gave it to me, guess what? I've got to take what he gave me and render it back as a fruit unto him. All right? Not as a leaf, not as a blossom, but fruit. So the greatest fruit that I can give him is hallelujah. See? That's the greatest fruit I can give him out of my lips is hallelujah. So, so I'll, I'll order myself to give him the greatest fruit. All right? It's the, it's the produce of the tree. Okay? What's the produce of your tree? All right? As you're getting up every day with a lemon, squeezing lemons on God, it's lemon juice, trying to, or do you get up and you're given the produce of the tree? Lord, God bless you. Thank you that I have people that love you, Lord, that's in my life. Thank you, Lord God, that there are people that I can talk to about you and I don't have to be a stranger in a strange land. Thank you, Lord God. Praise him every day. Lord, I thank you for your blood. You know, thank you, oh Lord God, that you brought me up in this age. I wasn't brought up in the 1600s. You know, thank you, Lord. I was brought up at this time when we have a freedom to speak the word and we can talk the word and we can raise our kids up, Lord God. And we can walk down the street if you want to and raise your hand up. You can even put a cross on wheels and drag it if you want to. God's not going to deny that. He's going to say, you're taking a stand for me. You're seeking righteousness. I'm going to add all these things. So what do you want today? That's his question. What do you want? If you're doing all this, He's the one who answers. So what do you want? And then he tells us, he says, if it's something that you want, don't let me rest until you get it. Now, you, now you, can't, you can't get past that when the Lord tell you, don't let me rest until you get what you asked me for. See? Now, how can you get past that? You got to go like, man, he, he's a God of the wilderness, all right, because I'm telling you, I need some shade over me, Lord. I don't have no trees. <laughs> Woo! Philippians chapter 4. Smile a little bigger today. Well, tomorrow anyway. You guys go home and look at Schultz tonight. I know nothing. <laughs> I hear nothing. Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Come on here. Smartphone. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Oh, boy. What? Well, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. We're not talking about that, what you're going through. We're talking about what you're going to. Remember you in your future, not in your past. <laughs> Remember faith is in your future, so I'm always going to something. All right? So when a crisis come up, I'm not standing there and, and uh, perpetuating the crisis and, oh, man, I'm just going to make this crisis grow. Oh, you just grow because I'm just going to worry about you. I'm going to feed you today. Worry. Oh. <laughs> you're not doing that. What you're doing is you're stepping into your future. Lord, I thank you that I understand the other side of a crisis. There's a sunny side to a crisis. It's called opportunity. <laughs> and the opportunity is the side that I'm going to think on right now, Lord. So let's think about the sunny side, Lord. You know, we leave the danger side alone, but let's think about the sunny side. All right? And so I go to the sunny side. And this is what David did at Ziglag. He went to the sunny side. He said, Lord, you know, shall I go or shall I stay? You know exactly because you own the victory. And the Lord said, go, it's all yours. Go take care of it. See, again, I'm, he's speaking to the Lord. He's in constant communication with God. And so guess what? He's making God the first. He's letting the Lord know, listen, I'm not going to make a decision until I know what your decision is. Amen. See, when I know what your decision is, then I'll make a decision. But if I make a decision on my own, 
guess what? I'm showing the Lord that, guess what? I know what's good or what's bad for me. And you stay on the sideline and watch me live my life. See, when I take the promises, and this is why all we should live on the promises, nothing else. We should live on the basis of what the word says, okay? And don't leave that because when we leave that, we're getting over into deciding what we believe is right or wrong for ourselves. Got to watch that, okay? And so he says this, finally, brethren, mm, whatsoever things are true, <laughs> whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, oh man, whatsoever things are of a good report, was it a good report? Mm, wasn't a good report. Shouldn't say it. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Because what you think on, that's what you're going to be drawn to. So if I think on the good things, then guess what? And I think on the opportunity on the other side. The crisis is here, but there's an opportunity here. And there's also danger there. I can get into danger when, when crisis comes. But I'm looking for the sunny side of the circumstance. I'm looking for the sunny side. What does the sunny side say? All things are possible with God. That's what it says. All things because of who you are. The last scripture we're going to use tonight, 1 John chapter 4. Please, I, I've always loved these, these particular scriptures about who we are. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Why can you rejoice? I mean, why can you get up in the morning and thank God? Lord, you gave me a job, and there are other people out here that are acting like they don't know what it's all about. And I thank you that you're providing for my house. I thank you that you've separated me. You called me out of darkness into light. I thank you, Lord God, that you've given me what you've given me. I bless you because I couldn't, I could never have gotten sitting down and just, just say, okay, let me put on paper. I'm going to write our life out. No. The journey ain't like that. You go to D.C., sometimes you got to wait in traffic. Don't ever, don't ever think that you're going to go there uh, unless it's, Two o'clock in the morning on a Sunday night. All right. Well, you get to drive straight up there to go right into D.C., all right? Go there about six o'clock in the morning and see what happens, all right? Just, just, try, just try traveling. The journey is always filled with stop-and-go moments in life. Always. Our, our whole life is like that. There are times when you and I get to a place where we, things seem like they just shut down. We're in traffic, all right? Sometimes God has picked you up, and he's holding you there so he can fix you before he puts you back down. Sometimes you got to know that, guess what? He's not letting you move because he's got to move something in front of you. Y'all going to get this, okay? But there are things that happen in our life that are so, we, everybody say, oh, that was just a consequence. There's nothing consequential in your life. There's nothing that goes on that God doesn't know about that is not worked out by him because of who you are. All right? He says this in 1 John chapter 4. All right? You are of God, little children. <laughs> you are of God, little children. I don't hear nobody hollering here now. See, this is, why you, this is what makes you shout all the time. This is what gives you a merry heart. I belong to the Lord. I don't belong to the devil. I don't belong to the world. I don't belong to anybody else except the Lord. And so I have a merry heart every day just because I belong to the Lord. If nothing else was going this way or that way, because I belong to him, that's enough to make you happy. Because you already know what's going to happen when you belong to the Lord. My thoughts towards you are <laughs> thoughts of peace to give you a prosperous, expected, loving, oh, uh, tremendous lifestyle. This is, what my, this is how I think about you. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. See, that's what you got a lot to shout about. This is this what makes you have a merry heart. No matter what you're going through, the doctor can give you a, a, you know, a report that says that you, you think you're in September, but you're really in, DC, in, De in De December. He can give you a report and make you think that, guess what? Oh, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. But you got to know who the Lord is. He's the Lord of the reversal. See? He can reverse your life. He can reverse your body. All right? He can reverse anything that's going on in your life Anytime, anytime you become intimate with him, he can reverse anything. All you got to do is know who he is and know that he want to do it for you. 
Are you guys with me tonight? Yes. So, uh, oh, look, 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 look. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Refuse to be a captive because you are already declared a deliverer. You are a son of God. What does the sons of God do? They deliver. So if I know that I am a deliverer, I can never be a captive. I can never become a captive because I know who I am. I can only become a captive when I think or, or, or live on the level of not understanding what my position in God is. God is never going to allow you to be a captive of anything again. Once he delivered you, you have been delivered. And as Jesus said, ain't nobody can take you out of daddy's hands. Nobody can take you out of daddy's hand. You have been delivered. You guys with me tonight? Y'all sitting there looking at me like y'all still captives. I don't know. See, <laughs> see, see, this is why all the time, no matter what's going on, you have to have this attitude. Yeah, it can, it can look bad in the natural, but we are not of the natural, okay? And it can sound bad in the natural, but the kingdom language is not a natural language. Okay? And so, you know, when you see people doing this and doing that, and they say, well, you know, I, I've been serving the Lord this long, or I've been in church this long, I whatever. That doesn't mean anything. What means everything is your faith. Yes. What are you doing with what you know? Yes. Not what you used to do, but what are you doing now with what you know? Because Jesus didn't say those who started out good. He said those who endure to the end. He didn't say those who started out. He said those that endure to the end. Those are the ones that shall be, what? Set free until eternal life. So, I don't know what you guys out there tonight, but I'm always like this. All right? Regardless of what's going on, keep your smile, as I said, so you can go another mile. Keep your smile up every day. Somebody's looking for you to smile to them. They need it. When you walk on that job, be happy. You don't have to walk in there and be all religious, you know? Just be a happy person so that somebody can have some impartation of the power that's causing your life to be joyful like that. It doesn't have to be given. Sometimes people just reach over and touch that tassel that's on your life, and they receive from that little bit that's hanging down on your tassel, that tassel of life that you're carrying because of who you are in Christ Jesus. And so we, we here tonight at Faith Christian Center World Outreach, let me tell you something, I'll tell you, you ought to be happy. You ought to go to bed happy tonight Get up in the morning happy, you know, and, and if you can't be happy, I'll assign somebody here tonight to come to your house and help you be happy, all right? You know, <laughs> I'll make a happy assignment of somebody's life to help you get through in Jesus' name, amen? Well, we thank you for your time. We pray that you've enjoyed. Uh, take the word at heart. God loves you dearly. He gave his son, Jesus Christ, for you. So he doesn't have to prove how much he loves you anymore, but he does, he do want you to do this. And that is to honor him for his faithfulness, for he is faithful. Amen. God bless you. We see you on our next broadcast. Amen. Live stream, we are. Hallelujah. Amen.